Good day. My name is Chief Strongblood, aka Alan Palmer. I'm St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. My people, I'm, I'm here to give you another update as to the progress of my protest. Today, the Caucasians did all in the power to make me late. So I came here late, but I still spent the, quiet, the required amount of time that I normally spend. For all of you who are deeply in love with the Caucasians, I want you to listen to this, and I want you to bear in mind that I am not special. I am in no way special. My experiences are the experiences of the African American and the other black people that resides in this country. But most of us always think we are special and our experiences are unique to us. But I will tell you, I know for sure that I am not the first person the Caucasians did this to and I will not be the last person the Caucasians are going to do this to. Right? Now, I had some civil matter in the federal court. And they wanted me to abandon those matters. And because I would not abandon those matters, they came up with a plan. And the plan that they came up with was, to, was supposed to kill two birds with one stone. I have been arrested on numerous occasions in New York City, in California. They've took me to court on numerous occasions and they can't get a conviction on me. So they came up with a big plan in California and their big plan was to kill two birds with one stone to get me to abandon my federal cases, my federal civil cases, and to give me a, con a conviction. However, they had this whole cuckoo cook up at the, f at the federal court building. Mind you, by this time, the federal court building have already transferred usage and ownership to the county and it was being used as a superior court building. The superior, the superior court security and all of those people have already taken up possession of the building. But they kept back one member of the marshal service at that building because if there were no, mem no member of the marshal service at present, they couldn't take the matter to federal court. However, they cook up a big sankey. They call in the federal officer who charged me, took me to federal court. People listen carefully. Their objective was to get me to abandon my federal civil cases and to give me a criminal record in the process. I go, I research the, the charges. I know they had no case. So I went ahead and I filed a no case submission. And I bring all the points why this case should not even be heard in the court of law. Waste my time, waste the court's resources and the judge's time. Because I'm not represented. They ignore my no case submission. I went to the arraignment. And in the arraignment, the Caucasians don't have the whole thing set up. They had a black guy, a slave, who was acting as a um, public, defend public defendant. He came, he took my case file, he called me in the room, and he said, this is how we're going to... But before that, before that, they gave him the opportunity to perform with the judge on behalf of a Caucasian guy. And he performed. He well performed. Their objective was to convince me that this black guy, this slave, 
know what he was doing and he will represent me well. So he took me into the room with my case file and he said, well, this is how we're going to do it. I said, no, we, we, this is not how we're going to do it. The mark of homosexuality was all over this guy. I said, this is not how we're going to do it. I said, this case, this is my case. I am going to represent myself. He said, okay. He went outside. And there were three Caucasians guy sitting in the, in the, court, in the court audience. They call him over. So he tell them that he say he's going to represent himself. And they were very upset. They say, ask, let me see his case file. I give them the case file. The, court, the three Caucasians reviewed it. And they were very upset that I was not going to play along with their game. So when I was called up for the arraignment, I told the judge, Judge, I don't want the public defender representing me. I will represent myself. She said, OK. She gave me a court date. My people, I went to court. And the first thing I did, I said, Judge, why is this case being heard? I submitted a no case submission. And I am sure the points made in that no case submission is sufficient to abandon this hearing. He didn't bother with me. The, the prosecutor get up and say that the submission was late. Right? We carry on with the case. They call all the witnesses. They call some of the big shots, um, billing manager for the for such and such and so forth. They, all of the witnesses they call my people. Yahawasha, the son of the Most I says, when they are prosecuting you, don't think about what you have to say. The spirit will give you utterance, my people. I demolish every one of the witness they brought. They had this big shot lady came in. She's the building manager for the entire court building. She oversees this and so forth. My people, when I done with her, she, she was trembling in the box. I told her, listen to me. You may be tempted to lie to me because you think you're speaking to me. I am only asking you the questions. But the answer you give is for the judge. My people, when I finished with her, she was trembling in the box. When I finished with one of the security guys who they bring, he went outside of the courtroom and he stand with his back against the wall, staring into space like a crazy man. After I finish demolishing all of their witnesses, I said, judge, I am not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste the court's time. I'm not going to give evidence in this case because the prosecution did not present a case based on the evidence they present here. The judge say, well, Madam Prosecution, you have not presented a case based on the charge. Everything that I put in my no case submission, everything I put in my no case submission, the judge reiterated in dismissing the case. So the question I wanted to ask is, why didn't he accept my no case submission? However, when I was leaving the court, the prosecution had about eight members to prosecute me. Three of them were supervisors and they were, the rest were part of the, the prosecution team, including a black lady. When I finished, the black lady came over to me personally and she shook my hand. She said, boy, you are good. Well, not, not in those words. She said, you are good. You know what you're doing. And when I was leaving the court, all of the member, all of the members of the prosecution team, including their supervisors, except for the one who actually was involved in prosecuting the case, met me at the, at the door. 
and each of them shook my hand. They failed to get me to abandon the civil matters. And up to today, they failed to get me a black man in California without a criminal record. I will not be their slave because I'll not participate in homosexuality, bestiality. I will not encourage any woman to have an abortion. I'm still without a criminal record. And I have knifed a few people and I was arrested for knifing them in this place. But who the most I bless? No man can cause. So you love the white man? Huh? I know I'm not special. This is what they have been doing to the African American and other black people in this place for a long, long, long time. And they are still doing it. They tried to do it for me, with me, and they failed. My people, my name is Chief Strongblood, also known as Alan Palmer, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' favorite and most hated son, the diaspora machismo. I'm out.